Swati Kap. Welcome to this episode of the Pu'u Muay Thai Podcast. So I am currently live on TikTok as well. So if you're on TikTok, you have questions about this stuff, please, please let me know. Um, what I wanted to go over today, uh, I talked about it a little bit last time, just like the state of Muay Thai in Thailand, right? Worldwide. But this, by going to Thailand, it is now international Thailand with online streaming services like DAZN, Amazon Prime, YouTube, even Facebook. All right. Things have really grown exponentially over the past four years with Muay Thai. And a lot of this caters around Thailand. Like, let's let's be real. Let's be real. Uh, Sam Holden says, RWS all day. I like one, but RWS has consistently high level and entertaining fights without there becoming brawls. Yes. So let, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. All right. <clears throat> Part of... What uh what we got here with RWS, which stands for Rajdanun World Series, and then one, which is one championship, right? So let's go first with one championship. One championship, uh, obviously Thai Chinese based out of Singapore, Cayman Islands now. So I'll show it here on the screen. So this is their website as well, founded by Chatri Sitiyotong. And the great thing about this is it's brought a lot of attention here in the West with their media, right? The Muay Thai media that you see from one championship is really exponential, right? The amount of things you see about one is just huge. There's tons and tons of people that know what one is, one championship. When they come into Pu'u Muay Thai, we ask them, how do you hear about Muay Thai? They're like, oh, I, I follow one championship or I saw one championship online or I saw on my Amazon Prime video because here in the U.S., we have listeners all around the world. I'll give you a frame of reference. Here in the United States, smart TVs, they usually come with uh, some apps pre-installed on it. One of those apps being Amazon Prime, all right? Most people in the United States have Amazon Prime. So they're getting this right on their dashboard, on their TV. They're seeing Amazon Prime that like, hey, they're streaming this event. It's included for free. So that is like a, it's bringing a lot of attention to Muay Thai, martial arts, MMA, kickboxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but specifically Muay Thai. And you can see in here, on the screen here, there's the MMA glove, right? That is here on one championship. So they use the MMA glove for Muay Thai fights. They are not the first ones to do this, but they're the ones to popular, eh, make it very popular, essentially, right? There was Muay Extreme, there was John Wayne Parr's Cage Muay Thai, but one is known for these MMA gloves. And these are for better or worse, all right? Better or worse. The thing is with um, one championship with these, why I say for better or worse is for worse, there's more hand injuries that are happening, all right? Because there's a lot more striking than an MMA, and these guys are generating a lot of force, right? So there's a lot more hand injuries that are happening. Whereas... Uh, also for like, let's say fighters, right? And fans for better is the knockout ratio is going way up, right? Like uh, going night night, they can't take as much damage. The cut happens sooner, or they're getting the knockout sooner. But it's also turning, like Sam said, into a whole like a uh, slugfest for Muay Thai, right? Which is not that's not so much Muay Thai, but you're seeing like this evolution of the sport. Because if you think about Muay Thai in whole. And where one's at on the cycle is they used to fight with the ropes. It was like the called Chuck fights, right? We've talked about that on here before. Um, shout out to Rumble in the Jungle down in now they're in Escondido in uh, Oaxaca, Mexico. All right, but the the key thing is not everybody is familiar with that, right? So then it went into the big gloves, right? Which I'm gonna go over here. We could see Roger Dunnone World Series. They actually, let's see if they have any pictures here of them using these more traditional Muay Thai gloves. There's actually no pictures on there. Let's see if they have it down here. Ah, there you go. So you're seeing the traditional Muay Thai glove, like the boxing style glove for Muay Thai that they use in here. So that's one of the key differences inside of here as well. How you doing, Dom, over on TikTok? Shout out to you. Thanks for always coming in, man. He said he's also liking the RWS a lot too. So now let's go into some uh, 
some things that are good and bad about RWS, right? So Roch Dumnun World Series, look, just the top full of the website here, it shows a lot of activity on one championship's website. But RWS, look, tournament. They have like a listed out tournament, the fighters, what country they're from. You don't, you kind of see it here in writing, but I think the flags, the media side of it is really good. They actually, for RWS, they have GSV. So I think it's Global Sports Vision. It's a media company. And I believe they actually bought the rights to Rush Dumbdown Stadium. So they're the ones that are be that are doing this now. And they're an international media company, straight up. So that's that's who you're dealing with when it comes into these different levels of, of media, right? And they're doing it a little bit different than uh, one championship, where one championship is getting a lot of sponsors. They're getting a lot of investors. They're doing a bunch of free stuff. Everything's free. Right, but there's a lot of money and sponsor investors that are coming in. Search result because it contains unoriginal or reproduced content. This is in line with uh, appeal. This I'm surprised that um, so TikTok just flagged me because <laughs> uh, it says it says that my content is not original. I don't know why it's saying it's not original. Okay, so let's let's go back here because this is original content. I'm I'm literally me talking about this. So um, I submitted my appeal on it, by the way. Uh, for anybody that's on here, I, it's literally me a, a screen recording of me talking about uh, RWS this this competition, right? So you can see they have all the different weight classes. The A man, you know, like who's going to be fighting when? How are they doing it? How they're doing the draws? Like it's all on here. They have fighters ranking. Right, they show the fighters, they show their win loss record, everything on here. One championship, not really. All right, shows some of their fighters. So, I'm going to say RWS's website better. Uh, it really spotlights the fighters a little bit more. Um, and as Sam said here, I love RWS is free on YouTube and the fact they have so many cars with high level talent. So, and we'll get to that here in a second, too. So, they also have that traditional model. So uh, one championship takes place at the new Lumpini Stadium, right? Uh, Lumpini Stadium moved, I think it was 2013. I actually got to go to the last show of the original Lumpini Stadium and the first show of the new Lumpini Stadium. Uh, so it's at the new Lumpini Stadium, which I it's nice. It's just not the same vibe, right? Whereas RWS, Roger Dumnon World Series, takes place at Roger Dumnon Stadium, which is the first ever Muay Thai Stadium in the world first one in the world so i'd be surprised how many people don't know this that are newer to muay thai or been involved for a little while and they don't really quite understand what that means so you like muay thai well the reason why you hear about muay thai is roger dumb known they're one of the reasons why all right so this takes place at the original roger dumb known stadium if you follow us on uh instagram i go there all the time when i'm there for fights i'm there all right so uh, as we're kind of going into that as well again the more traditional gloves like we're talking about too and having those two differences it's it goes between the thing is Rush Dem Nun where it's located in Bangkok is it is not far so Rush Dem Nun it's like the or one of the first it's on one of the first paved roads near the Royal Palace in Bangkok all right one of the first paved roads near Yawa Rat Road which is uh, Chinatown that used to be where all the royals would go down all right is one of the original places. It means like a marching road, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that's just some history. There's actually a tree that's outside of Roger Dumnon Stadium. This tree's super old. They have all these like Buddhist ties around it. But there's a, just tons of history here, and you can see videos. And they're making a whole history museum at Roger Dumnon Stadium in Bangkok for this. All right, but you're not hearing about RWS on media as much when it comes into uh, international stuff here in the West. I don't get people coming in to our academy that say, I came in here because I saw RWS, right? They're streaming on DAZN, they're streaming on YouTube and Facebook and all this stuff, but you're not seeing like a much of, like in the Muay Thai world and like countries where Muay Thai is big, people know what it is. But in the US, we're seeing more of the one. And I think that's because of the Amazon influence and also this MMA glove appeal that you see for one championship westerners like that it looks like mma all right the fun part of mma the striking 
they see it, all right? They don't know the difference. They just go, oh, it's fighting, right? So I think if you can get this in front of people, because I honestly believe that the production quality between both in the production of RWS, I believe is much higher production quality than in a one championship event, all right? I've been to both of them multiple times in person. I'm firsthand experience being around combat sports productions from the back end of things as well. I've seen a ton of stuff from RWS. When it comes into fight purses, I'm not quite sure about how the fight purses vary between one championship and RWS, but I do know that people are still gambling in Thailand on these, even though it might not be in person. They're definitely doing it on apps in Thailand on both events. Okay. They're not doing it in person like you would see at a traditional stadium style Muay Thai event, but you are definitely seeing it here. All right. Kind of going into um, some of the differences, like I said, the gambling. So the the knockout bonuses that they do for one championship, 350,000 Thai bot. That is pretty significant money, especially in Thailand. All right. It's close to like 10 grand. So I don't know. I, I think. Uh, RWS is doing stuff. I'm not too familiar with as many of the bonus structures because they don't really play it up as much on there, right? When it comes into the production, the whole show, they do a lot of crowd interaction, right? And we'll kind of get into the crowds here in a second. This is why I think RWS actually might end up being better in the long run, potentially, if they can get into that Western market like one has. So what I'm seeing is, so one championship, they do a Friday night fight show Every Friday from Lumpini, every single person that's there gets a free comped ticket. No one is paying for a ticket to go into one Friday night fights. Even the uh, the uh, pay per view events that I've been to there, no one's it's comp tickets. Everybody's getting free tickets. Nobody's paying for the tickets because the sponsorship money is paying for it, right? Or allegedly, because people are talking about one having all these financial issues, right? All right, if they're having so many financial issues, why aren't they charging for people to go in and watch fights, All right? Where <clears throat> Roger Dumnun, they everybody's paying to have their butt in that seat. Like I said, they're more in a touristy area. Uh, Dom says that's crazy. Yes, that is crazy. Every single person at RWS is paying to be in the show. So they really do a lot of crowd interaction. They do like a fan cam, chug cam, dance cam. Like they do a lot of stuff that like, it makes it feel like a major league sporting event, similar to like a baseball game, all right? So they're really doing a good job of tying that in. They have cameras in the crowd that are going through, capturing people, all the cranes. They do a lot of interaction. That's missing from one championship. One championship does not have that. There's a lot of spotlight on the fighters, which is great. It's just different, all right? But they're doing this because they're showing the value to the people that pay for their ticket to come into RWS. All right. So with one championship, you're seeing some other promotions around the world. They're, they did a road to one. All right. Warriors Cup in the United States being one of them. All right. They are now beginning road to RWS. That is happening. Road to RWS is becoming a thing. The Tourism Authority of Thailand is tripling down on Muay Thai. And RWS is one of the promotions they're backing for this. All right. They're helping fund this stuff. They just did one in Spain, a road to RWS, I believe. And uh, let, let's type this in. So road to RWS, Spain. Muay Thai. So I could have sworn they just did one. Yeah, road to RWS arrives. So this is from uh, Muay Thai Authority. Rise in Cadiz, Spain with world title fights. Yeah, they just had this. All right. So they just had their first one. Their first, that's not their first international event, but this is their first time uh, going over and doing a road to RWS series. They also just started RWS in Japan, right? So, and they're doing these events successfully. They have media teams everywhere that are starting to build out on these. I think it's only a matter of time before we see this in the United States or in North America, maybe in a place like Mexico. Um, or maybe Canada or something like that. But I think Mexico will probably be the place for RWS to go because it's cheap, low regulation, very easy. If you're listening to this and you're involved with RWS, go look at Mexico. Honestly, man, Tijuana, Mexico City, Monterrey. Just put it out there for you guys. All right. Cause, or maybe even Cancun, but that's expensive and it's a, quite a bit of a flight. 
Tijuana is close to the U.S. border. Monterey is also easy to get to from the United States. So just putting that out there for anybody that might be listening that has some influence in the sport. So when we go into this, all right, I want you to just think about the context of between both, right? So you have one that's going on the highlighting the fighters, not interacting too much with the crowd, giving out comp tickets, giving out massive fight purses, partnered with Amazon, right? Whereas we got RWS, everybody's paying to have their butt in the seat, right? Crowd interaction, building up on the fighters here. Look, this is easy to follow. You see everybody that has their Facebook, has their Instagram, everything around the homepage. This one, you got to like dig, like doesn't have anything on here. Nothing. Let's see, view highlights. I think that's good. I, I do like this layout. Let's see this. Let's go. Let's go with Roger Dunn World Series. Let's see there. So look, pops up right away. Watch fight, get tickets, see the next one. This is great. And also one of the things that they do different in RWS, they do a point system when it comes into this, right? So not only do they have it set up so uh, at the show, they do an open scoring system at RWS. Each round, they display it up on the screen for the audience to see who won the round. They actually explain, hey, this is this person won this round. This is what a 10-9 is. This is what a 10-8 is, right? So they show this. And if there's a draw going into the last round, like one fighter has one round, one has the other, 10-9 round one for red, 10-9 uh, round two for blue, for example, they'll say, hey, decision round. They make it a whole big thing, all right? Whereas, like, you don't see that so much in, in one championship, all right? So the, one, the open scoring they do at RWS, along with the point system for the tournaments, they're doing more or less, they did this in surfing, they did this in surfing when surfing started blowing up, guys. Well, Surf League. So you may not know this, but surfing, there's a lot of parallels between surfing and Muay Thai. Everybody's driven my passion. It's very niche. It's growing, and there's people trying to figure out how to make this shit work. So that's what I am seeing in regards to both. All right? I like both, but they both are very different, but they're both the same. They're both Muay Thai. But one has more authentic Muay Thai, where it comes into the gloves, the stadium aesthetic, you know, with how, how they're doing this. Like, you know, look at one championship. They had the issue where uh, the Sports Authority of Thailand came after them because they were calling it Muay Thai, not paying homage to the roots of Muay Thai, right? RWS never had that issue because they didn't really stray away from that model uh, of Muay Thai, right, in Thailand. And now we're seeing the the fruits of that come come to fruition. So a lot of people, they're like, hey, how come Muay Thai hasn't grown? And they're saying, oh, because of Y Crew, Ram Moy, all this stuff, the Muay Thai music. Well, guess what? One got rid of that. So we already have that, right? It is growing, it is bringing more eyes on the sport. I think more people are going to start filtering it over and watching RWS. So let's check out fighter rankings. See, so they don't have like a, a ranking set up on here either. Doing press release. Uh, world champions, all athletes rankings. There we go. So Roger Dumnone just has theirs, has a PDF file. Let's see once that downloads. Whereas this one, so this is their their rankings. So that's one one downside of that. Boom, right there is a PDF file. But I I don't blame them. Uh, this system seems a little bit more robust that they have built out for one. So I like this. RWS, step it up. Get this system that uh, one has uh, on on their system. I really think that this is just makes it easy because who wants to open up a WordPress PDF file and go scroll through it? But this does have everything on here, right? So having the whole ranking number one through number fourteen, this has one through five. That's fine, top five. But I think personally, you should have like top ten uh on there but what's cool about it there's their instagram and everything so this is missing from the home page in my opinion but for those that might be listening on here too it just it's a page so like the one championship page has a picture of the fighter who's the champion in the weight class on the left then it has the top five below them in smaller pictures okay and it shows what team they're from what country they're from so they have that for like their MMA and Muay Thai for their popular divisions. The one for Roger Dumnon World Series, it's a PDF file, has their champion up picture, name in Thai and English on there and what country they're from. You can see majority of the champions are Thai, right? Because they still have the RWS, the Roger Dumnon Stadium title belt, which is 
original belt. But you're seeing some of these higher weight classes, 154. You're seeing like uh, Turkey in there, um, more countries and stuff. Denmark, Spain, Mexico, Japan, United States. Oh, United States. There we go. Oh, Kennedy from Southern California. There you go. So it's this is a good thing that they have. Uh, but these are some of the main differences I'm seeing in the media style. So what I'm seeing in the media style for one is the one model for media is really monetizing each event. Okay. In regards to sponsorship, um, what I'm seeing for Roger Dumnon World Series. And by the way, Roger Dumnon World Series, when you go there, you may have to pay for a ticket, but they had free beer, Leo beer for everybody. I don't drink, so I didn't get it, but they had free beer in the stands, outside, everything. That's a major win for a fan that wants to go there in person. I don't know if they can keep that up all over the world, but that was pretty sweet. Going into uh, this, they're also, they brought in people in the RWS as well. They fly them out there. They brought in, you know, Selena Flores from the United States. They flew her out there to go fight. Like, I've seen, this has been happening on here. So, uh, the model that they get, of course, one championship is doing this as well. You see Luke Say, Eddie Solo. But the differences are, you know, quite substantial. All right. Um, anyways, if you're listening to this or you're watching this on YouTube, Make sure to leave a comment. Let me know who you think is like, who's keeping more Muay Thai, right? Which one do you prefer? I like both for different reasons. I like watching RWS. It makes me feel like I'm in Thailand when I watch it. When I watch one, I feel like I'm just like watching fights, right? They're both, they're both entertaining as hell in different ways. Um, that's my personal opinion. I like the storytelling also of one where they're highlighting the person's story. Uh, RWS, you see that a little bit as well. I think you're going to be seeing more of it as they continue to be established in the market because they're still newer to the game in regards to uh, one championship, uh, one having like nine years on them. So RWS has grown substantially in the past 18 months. I saw the production level uh, like a year and a half ago to now. It's exponential growth. It's insane. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this. And, um, you know, Saturday morning, I am now watching RWS. And I encourage you to as well. Uh, again, let me know, shoot me a message, um, podcast.putumoytai.com, put your question in there, whatever, what you think. I'll definitely read it out here on the show. Um, I, I want to see more people do that. Or if you're in the comments on YouTube, go leave a comment down below. Let us know. I'd be happy to, uh, I guess, talk about this with you. And uh, maybe you have a different perspective than me. Uh, I'm not in Thailand all the time. So there is a lot of foreigners who are out in Thailand that maybe have a different perspective on this than me. But one's giving out comp tickets and is allegedly losing money. The other one is all paid tickets and sponsors as well. So we'll kind of see where that goes over the span of time. But thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. As always, I will see you next.